the way you wish that boy would call you is how your parents wish you would call him. Trust me, because where I'll be. Good. Welcome back to the channel. I'm so happy to have you here. I hope you're having an amazing day or night wherever you are. I know it's time to go back to school, time to get back to our routines, but today we're gonna figure out some methods that we can use to make sure we have the best grades, that we're extremely productive, and that we kill this year. Okay, period. So if that's something you're interested in, stick around, we're gonna get right into it. Starting off with my moisturizer because we can't have dry skin on campus, girl. Let's talk. Now, you're probably thinking, girl, you seem a little grown to be talking about going back to school. And you're right, I'm 25. I'm 25 years old and I was also a student athlete at Purdue University. Boiler up, ever grateful, ever true. So there's a lot of things that I think helped me be able to juggle being a student athlete. Girl, hold on, hold on. I was a student athlete at a division one university, a top division one university at that, right? I also had a job. I worked as a hungry boiler person, so I did like Uber Eats, but it was called Hungry Boiler because we were boilers. Okay, on top of that, I also coached uh, club volleyball for one year while I was there. I was doing a lot at Purdue, and I still graduated with, I think, a three, three one or something like that. And I could have done way better had I had known what I'm about to tell you guys. So every time we hear about back to school, everyone talks about organization. Everyone talks about making sure you have a planner, making sure you have all your supplies and things like that, which is true. Planning is important, but you have to plan to how planning works for you. So for example, nowadays, a lot of the girls are using their iPads, right? And they use iPads for notes and you have all these like really cute organizational aesthetic things. And that wasn't really a thing when I was in college necessarily. Like we were using our iPads or iMacs for work, like for schoolwork. It wasn't really to be cute and have like cute notes and stuff. And if it was, none of my friends were doing that or using it. My suggestion, tip number one for making sure you have a successful back to school year is figuring out what works for you when it comes to organization. Me, I'm a pen and paper kind of girl. I have my paper planner over there. I have a paper notebook over here. For me, it's just something about that pen to paper action. You know what I mean? I feel like it just makes things sink into into my cranium a little bit more to understand what I mean. And, um, you know, sometimes I don't remember to use my iPhone or iPad for organizational things because for me, my phone is, um, for me, my phone isn't work. You know what I mean? Now that I'm doing YouTube and more content creation, it's becoming that way. But when I was back in school, I wasn't using my phone for anything other than maybe like notes, if anything at all, or like quick reminders. And especially when it comes to like my MacBook or iPad, it was just to watch movies and you know, maybe like surf the web, Ugh, surf the web. Oh my God, am I showing my age? Ugh. But you know, it wasn't really for organizational purposes, especially not keeping up with schoolwork. So if you are not a paper and pen girl, please, Please do not spend thousands of dollars on an iPad and an iPencil if you're not that kind of girl in the beginning. If you want to test out to see if you're that kind of girl, I would suggest getting a tablet that's a little more affordable, maybe two or three hundred dollars, and just see if that's something that you're able to keep up with before you go full on Mac mode and, you know, become a Mac girl because that is definitely an investment. And if you're someone like me that depended on financial aid, my parents didn't give me money during college, you're gonna wanna be smart with that money. I think when it comes to the new school year, all the girls like to like, you know, try out new things and new hacks to see if that's something that works for them or they saw their favorite influencer doing it. And don't talk about my nails. If you talk about my nails, that's a hate crime. Punishable by death. So all the girls have been, oh my God, I forgot to put primer on. <laughs> I'm gonna use the e.l.f. primer. At the end of the day, you have to be realistic and understand what works for you. And also understand that nothing is permanent when it comes to your organization, you know? Maybe for the first half of the semester, you decide that it's best to just stick with pen and paper. And then as you go on, you decide, you know what? I think it would be really useful to use an iPad. Or like I said, if you already buy a tablet and you think, you know what? I, uh, I think that the way my organization is going right now, a you know, an iPad would be very useful for me, then go for it. But just because it's a new school year, you know, everybody starts off buying a ton of supplies and this and that. And then by the end of the semester, you're using one college world notebook and a mechanical pencil that you found at the bottom of your book bag. Number two, when it comes back to going back to school and being productive, you have to make sure that you have your socials 
and your academics in order. And obviously that sounds pretty basic. That sounds like something everyone should understand and get. But what you have to remember is everybody starts off strong at the beginning of the school year, right? Everyone has their whiteboard hanging above their desk in their dorm or at home. You know, everybody understands what they wanna do, what their goals are for this semester. But sticking to that is the hardest part. And as somebody that was involved in sports, I was involved in other extracurricular activities. And like I said, I was working it became a lot to handle everything and things would get juggled sometimes and since i was on a scholarship like my job they brought me to that school to play volleyball obviously to be an amazing student right like you still have to have a certain gpa in order to even play but like that's what i got my scholarship for was to hit that daggone ball and so when that wasn't my priority that was an issue and that's the whole amazing thing about college or school in general is just learning how to balance your priorities and that's one thing also i want to touch on really quickly is a lot of people talk about you don't need to go to college anymore college isn't necessary Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. I do agree to a certain extent that there are certain things that maybe you can get real world experience from. Maybe if you're doing like a business degree or, you know, social media marketing and things like that, that's a very hands on field. And it's something that people are getting more and more experience with as they go, right? They're fairly new things. But one thing about being in college that I don't think I would have learned any other way is prioritizing things, getting things done when they need to be done, not procrastinating, and just holding myself responsible. You know, it's really hard to get that kind of experience when you're not in an environment that requires it. And, you know, I, I just think that college is so amazing for that aspect of it and I, I wish college didn't get such a bad rap, you know? I do think my experience was different because I was a student athlete, but at the same time, I loved college. I had an amazing time there. So back to what I was saying, prioritizing things. I wish I would have had reminders that would let me know you're seven days from your assignment being due, you're three days from your assignment being due, you're 48 hours before your assignment being due. Because I cannot tell you how many late nights I spent trying to catch up to an assignment and thankfully turn it in right in time, but I miss sleep and then I have practice in a few hours. Another thing that I really wish I would have figured out earlier too is understanding that you don't have to be at every single social event that goes on. I felt like as a student athlete, there were so many things that I missed out on, you know, certain parties and barbecues and, you know, just being a regular girl that I didn't get the privilege of doing because I was an athlete. It came to a point where I just, you know, I had to accept like, Sheridan, that's okay. You know, there's going to be tons of other things to do in the springtime when you're not in season and you have ample opportunity. There's always something going on on campus. There's always events going on. Don't beat yourself up too bad if you didn't get to go and experience this thing. That kind of helped me not put so much pressure on myself to be at every single event or to be so socially involved or to try to have so many different friends and just to be thankful and grateful for the circle that I was around. Um, and since a lot of my friends were athletes, we were all in the same position, you know? Most of the time we would just end up going to each other's apartments or if I had roommates, I would just go upstairs to my, my uh, teammates' room and we would just chill and talk. And that was okay, you know? And there were times where we did go out, but we found balance in that because we understood that sometimes you have to give and take. Fenty Beauty Ease Drop Blurring Skin Tint. So we've talked about organization, we've talked about learning how to separate and schedule. Now let's let's talk about distractions. Huh? Huh? Let's talk about distractions, girl. Cause listen, they're gonna come in the form of a man. Which you have to be very diligent and understand your behavior when it comes to prioritizing boys and school because in this new school year, I guarantee your goal is to have an astounding GPA and to really do something this year that you're proud of and, and reach new heights that you didn't reach before in your previous school years. But, you know, listen, I'm a girl's girl in a sense, like, <laughs> I love boys, okay? And if you've seen any of my other videos, like driving to the border of Mexico for one, you would see how I've kind of gotten into a little bit of a pickle for them. Do you know what I mean? But in college, you know, for me, I was so, again, like involved with being an athlete that 
<laughs> Child, we didn't really have time for that. I mean, I, I had, I had, you know what I'm saying? I had me a little boyfriend. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Hey, but it was during the off season, so I had more time. But during the school year, there just wasn't much time to put effort into that. And so my advice to you for my girls that are, you know, looking or not looking, but are opening themselves up to um, being in relationships is understanding, first of all, girl, why are you at college? Okay, you are not at college for that man. Please understand. And if he's talking about some, oh, you know, just don't go to class, stay in, or my friend is having a party, maybe just don't do that assignment right now, like it's not due for another couple of days, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Whether your parents are paying for your college or if you got a scholarship, it doesn't matter. You have resources that are going into your education and that needs to be put first, period. Okay, and if that man can't get with it, that man can get left. Because that's one thing that we're not about to do. And I also saw a lot of girls um, that, you know, weren't student athletes or that even were student athletes get into a lot of issues because of these boys. I know it's fun. I know it's exciting. And especially if you're going to school away from home, you have this newfound freedom and with more freedom comes more responsibility. And that's something that you have to figure out for yourself because nobody is holding your hand. Nobody is telling you to get up at 8 a.m. to get ready for your 9 a.m. Nobody is telling you to make sure you have all your supplies. Nobody is checking your homework. You have to be self-regulated by yourself. Also girls, if you have to wear darker foundation, always make sure you blend it into your hairline because you don't want to be looking crazy. The Born This Way Too Faced Multi Sculpting Concealer. And even when it comes to, maybe boys isn't the distraction, but maybe parties is. Um, there's always gonna be a group of people that are in college to party. So you will find parties all the time, okay? Um, trust me, there is no shortage of them. That I can promise you. Even as a student athlete, as someone with a booked schedule, between classes, having a game at 8 p.m. in Wisconsin and then having to catch a, a charter jet at 1 a.m. in the morning to come back and then have class at 8 a.m. There's always parties, trust me, I found a way. You will find a way. Understanding that you're not missing out on anything I think is really important and just being confident that your college experience is not going to go to waste, okay? You are going to be fine, babe. Where there's one party, there's a trillion more. Where there's one boy, <laughs> there's a trillion more. So make sure you understand that the reason that you're getting this education, that you're working hard, is for something more than just the moment. When you're young, you're so in tune with the moment, you're so excited, you always feel like you'll never get this opportunity again. This is the once in a lifetime opportunity. What I can tell you is I didn't go to a ton of parties while I was in college, but the ones that I went to, I remember like the back of my hand. They were so fun, they were so precious to me. I still have footage from like 2014, my freshman year of college, and those are things that I remember forever. And that's what's important, is about not taking every opportunity, but taking the right one, and that's gonna be what matters. So don't feel like you have to be pressured into getting to every single party, getting into every single event, making sure everybody named mama knows your name. That time will come when it makes sense, when you don't have anything else that's more important than it and you'll be able to enjoy it because there's nothing worse than being at a party and understanding like you got a final at 8 a.m. Why would you do that? Or that you have a paper that's due at 11.59, you at the party at 11.44. Girl, if you don't get your behind home, like it, it, babes, this, the math is not mathing. Now obviously this advice is for women that are not the, oh, like it doesn't matter, like just live life, you only live life once. If that's what you wanna do, babe, round of applause. But that's not that's not what we were here for. Do you know what I'm saying? Like that's not how I got down. Next up on the list, when we're talking about getting back to school and being productive, is presentation. Now, girl, this one for me is interesting because again, I was a student athlete, and so there were so many times, almost every day, essentially, I'm going from class to practice. And to get all dressed up, like the girls on Bama Rush, Bama Rush top, you know what I mean? You know those girls? I, 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 I couldn't do it. I didn't have it in me. I was exhausted all the time. And if I wasn't exhausted, 
I was trying to save up my energy to make sure I had my schoolwork done, you know? But if I were to go back and I wasn't a student athlete, I would definitely do the best that I can to make the most out of what I had. Now, again, you're in college, so I'm not expecting you to have skims budget. I'm not expecting you to have, you know what I'm saying, KKW beauty money. But I do think it's important to do what you can with what you have and what you have access to, you know? And there's always a Sephora, there's always a Walmart, there's always a Target, and there's always opportunities to make simple pieces look nice. Right now, I'm wearing a white bodysuit from Shein. It's giving the girls skims. I know it is. It's giving the girls naked wardrobe. But this was $5 from Shein. And I know, you know, fast fashion is bad. Ooh, but <laughs> we on a budget. This is the Fit Me Maybelline Powder in shade 20. And you know the saying, look good, feel good. That's not just a saying. That's not just something that people say to try to sound cool or to like get you motivated. Baby, it's for real. Because if I'm going to school in sweats and a t-shirt, I'm not nearly as conscious of what's going on. I'm not nearly as conscious of the fact that like I'm literally at this prestigious university trying to get this education, trying to feed my family, trying to get about the hood. That is something that I definitely would encourage you guys to take advantage of is even when you don't feel like it, get dressed. If there's five days out of the week that you're going to class, two out of those five days, three out of those five days, make an effort. Do you know what I mean? I understand those 7 a.m.s are grueling. Trust me. I understand those 8 a.m.s are grueling. Trust me. But if you can give yourself a couple extra minutes to get up in the morning, at least two times a week, I'm not saying every day, but at least two times a week, I guarantee you'll, you'll see just how much better you feel, just how much more confident you are, and just the fact of you'll be proud of yourself. Do you know what I mean? Like getting dressed for school, looking good. I feel proud of myself. I feel confident. I feel like, yeah, that's how I feel. I feel like, yeah. I, I remember when I would have presentations for like my sign language class or any other like marketing class that I would have, and I finally got to dress up, oh baby, I'm showing out, period. And every time I got dressed, best believe I got an A on that presentation. Cause I always loved speaking and talking to people and interacting, but let me look good too while I'm doing it. Girl, just go on ahead and put the A in the, in the school books. Put the A in the school books, babe. Cause it's a wrap. But that's because I understood the power of how I dressed. And you know, there's a reason why people wear costumes because the way you dress brings out a certain characteristic. The way you dress, you begin to embody that character. That's why in Halloween, if somebody's wearing an Iron Man costume, all of a sudden they're doing this, I am Iron Man. Their voice change, their mannerisms change because they're embodying what they're wearing. So please give yourself a couple extra minutes in the morning, if you can, to just put some mascara on. Slick your hair back, wear your hair out, give yourself a nice blowout, put in some cute twists, whatever you have to do to give yourself that edge to being that person that you wanna to present to the world, to being that person you wanna to present to yourself. I promise you, it will make such, such a huge difference. I'm gonna go in with my um, Rare Beauty Liquid Blush. I love putting on makeup. I love being a girl. Oh, being a girl is so much fun. We not only appear and when dudes ain't messing up. Yeah. Next, when we talk about going back to school, we obviously understand that there are a lot of things that change from life being at home to now being in our university. That's something that whether you're a freshman or a senior, you never really figure out the right way to do it, you kind of just end up doing it. So what I mean by that is usually while you're at home, you live a different life than when you're at school, right? Um, more times than not, when you go back home for summer, you're living with your parents or your grandparents. Life is a little slower. You have more time for your family and for your friends back home. And you're able to continue those relationships and watch them grow or just be able to be more present for them. Especially if you are someone that goes to school out of state like I was. But uh, when you get back to campus, babe, when you get back to school, it's a whole other ball game, right? Like your priorities are no longer checking in with mom and dad and grandma and grandpa or making sure that your best friend from elementary school is someone that you call weekly or even daily or like you did when you were back at home. So what are some things that I wish I would have done when it comes to maintaining those relationships while I was at Purdue? One thing about my under eyes, she's gonna crease. Like that's just something I've learned to accept. 
Until Makeup by Mario or Ariel do my makeup, it's just a life that I have to understand I have to live. I'm gonna do the best that I can with what I got. When it comes to trying to maintain those relationships and keep them in good standing, make the effort that you would want made to you. And I know a lot, especially in kids nowadays, we are just so focused with what we have going on in our own lives. And we live by the, if they wanted to, they would. If he wanted to, he would. If she wanted to, she would. And I can't think of how many times I wanted to and didn't. And that's the tea. If your parents come to mind, message them. If you haven't spoken to, you know, Sally, your best friend in a while, message her. It doesn't have to be anything deep. My parents still get on me about this to this day because now I am in other countries for four, five, six, seven, even eight months at a time now. And I am really bad at communicating with them and letting them know that I'm alive, essentially. Your parents are not gonna be here forever and it's important to be a part of their lives or keep them a part of your life while you can. That would be the first thing I would say is do the best that you can to just make a simple effort. If they pop into your head, message them. Or if you have some spare time on your hands, call them, FaceTime them. The way you wish that boy would call you is how your parents wish you would call in. Trust me, cause girl, I'll be Duh. Number two, when it comes to maintaining those relationships, if you're close enough within driving distance or maybe an hour flight, make the effort to go see them. If you're close enough to spend time with them, go spend time with them, you know? You don't know where life is going to take you, especially after you leave college. And right now where you kind of have more of a handle on things, it would be wise of you to take advantage of that opportunity of being able to see them. Now, speaking of relationships, Let's talk about dating in long distance. Listen, some of y'all that be having your high school boyfriends <laughs> and go to different universities that are more than 30 minutes away, because even an hour is hard, that are more than 30 minutes away. If this is a fairly new relationship, you have to be a grown up enough to have that adult conversation with your partner and try to get out of the way what are some expectations that you have going into this school year it's so much that happens your first year of college there's so many amazing things to experience and there's so many places you're going to want to go so many people you're going to want to meet and oftentimes being in a relationship that's far away your biggest form of communication is via text is facetime but when you're so active especially your first couple of weeks of college that time is completely short and you're doing orientations introductions first week projects learning where your cafeteria is learning where your classes are getting accustomed and acclimated to everything it's gonna be hard to keep up with that let alone a relationship if you and your person have that sort of understanding with each other and you recognize that you know what it's gonna be a crazy day at least throughout the day we can send periodic text messages and then at night we'll talk if that's a mature conversation you and your person are able to have then sure go for it try it out but if you're one of those people that have to be in contact 24 7 you can't go nothing without your man you my man my man my man my man my man babe i don't think that long distance is for you and if nobody else will tell you i will i don't think that's the road you should be taking babe i think that's the road less traveled on for a reason i have attempted to do the long distance um not my first year of college but my third year with you know um a guy from back home he was a wee bit possessive and very, um, you know, just freaking out because I was always around guys. And that's the other thing too, especially as a athlete that is um, surrounded by athletes all the time, like they're just my brothers. And I know that's like a red flag to a lot of guys like, oh, she got a lot of brothers, but like, they're really like my, like those are really my, like them really my brothers like we hang out all the time I hang out with their parents like we're close like we're family like I'm cool with their girls like it's never been nothing like that but for a man I understand why that would be threatening to him you know so I can't I don't blame him but I'm just saying you know you have to be conscious and aware of your person and how your person would act and has acted with situations like that in the past now I feel like I gotta go somewhere <laughs> you know what I'm saying yeah I feel like Cause the base is, babe, the base is basing tonight, honey. The base is basing. When it comes to going back to school, your social group is genuinely so important and so key 
and will determine so many factors about how your school year goes. Thankfully, like I said, I was a student athlete, so I was surrounded by athletes, and we all had similar experiences and similar expectations from our time at college, which was pretty much to like win championships. <laughs> your social circle will genuinely influence a lot of your decision making. And especially if you are someone that uh, relies heavily on your friends or you find yourself maybe making decisions based off of what your friends are saying, that is going to be a huge factor when it comes to going back to school and being productive. If you notice that the circle of friends that you were around was not aiding in your success or was making you question if you should put hanging out with them over school, that's not the circle you need to be around, sweetheart. If no one else will tell you, Sheridan's gonna tell you. That is not the circle you need to be around. Those friends are not gonna be there for you when it comes down to pushing you in the right direction, holding you accountable. And while at the same time, that's not their job, you still need friends that are gonna be able to be like, girl, don't you have a project due tomorrow? Have you started it? If your social circle is not prioritizing studies, you should not be prioritizing them, per. Hate to break it to you, babe, but yeah. Cause your parents are not paying all that money for you to just be hanging around lollygagging or you didn't work that hard to get that scholarship just for it to be going to waste. Absolutely not. And that's not fair to you and it's not fair to your experience. It's also really important to have, in my opinion, more than one group of friends. You can have your group of friends that you specifically study with, your study hall friends from certain classes and subjects and you guys have that in common. You are able to keep each other focused and you're able to feed off of each other, call each other accountable when you're working on school stuff. And then you can have your friends that you like to go out with, that you like to explore with, that you like to see different things with, and those can be your friends to do that with. But it's often hard to have your study friends be so geeked to go out and your going out friends be so geeked to study. It's not to say it can't happen, that you can't have both, but if you know yourself and you know your surroundings, make that decision based off of you and the people that you have around you. If you know hanging out with Brenda and Marsha, what kind of name is Brenda and Marsha? If you know that hanging out with Brenda and Marsha is not gonna get that paper done and you're the type of person that likes to be in an environment of working people, then go hang out with the working people, you know? Don't try to force the partying people to work because that's not gonna happen and then that's gonna put a wedge in between your friendship. Okay, lips. Oh my gosh, I'm like embarrassed. This is my lip liner from ColourPop. It's in the shade BFF3. And one of the most important things about having a successful school year is listening to your body and listening to your mind to avoid burnout. I had a couple of teammates that were so, so, so school driven that they had zero social life, that they never did anything that they wanted to do, and that they always felt so pressured by their families to make sure that they had certain grades. And it was almost like they were going to school for their families and not for themselves. And while I understand that that is a burden to some, you have to remember that you are the person sitting in those seats day after day, doing that homework night after night. Not your parents, not your brother, not your sister, you. And if you are having a problem with maintaining that pace, then maybe you have to slow down. Maybe you have to take intermittent breaks. Maybe you have to be a person that puts a watch on or a timer on when you're doing your work to make sure that you give yourself adequate breaks. Maybe you go for 45 minutes, take a 10 minute break. Go for 55 minutes, take a 15 minute break. But going so hard, trying to do these three hour, four hour, five hour study sessions, your brain physiologically cannot handle all that information you're giving it anyways. I know it sounds cool. Yeah, I crammed for this test for six hours and da-da-da. Like it sounds like you're just so elite and you're just so smart and you're just giving the world nerd and you're giving the world A+, plus, but you're giving yourself a migraine. So maybe that looks like I've been studying for two hours. I wanna take a break and go walk around the park. I wanna take a break and go to Starbucks, maybe go to a $5 movie. Usually on Tuesdays at Purdue, we had, I think it was $5 if you had a student ID or something like that. We would go down to the movies and you know maybe go see Black Panther or 
we would see, like whatever was in theaters at that time. And that was so much fun because it wasn't much, but it was just a break. And it was a time that I could feel like a normal person, you know, that wasn't stressed with a game that we had in two days or worried about getting this assignment finished or having to go do laundry and pack and unpack right before another trip, you know, just relaxing and being a part of a good old society, enjoying a movie. It gave me peace and in a sense, a reset, you know, things are always so calm after you come from the movie theaters. I don't know what it is about the movie theaters but that's what the movie theaters be given you really have no idea how good that feels for yourself a lot of people like to take breaks and scroll on social media and scroll on the internet and things like that um, everyone's breaks are different but I really suggest getting out of your room getting out of your dorm getting out of whatever building or whatever setting that you may be studying in and give your body that break right you may think that it's a break just getting off of one platform and going on to another but you really don't understand the effects that just being behind a screen all day is doing to your body anyways so when you get that chance and you have access to other things around you that can give you some freedom that can give you a break take it take advantage of it your body will give you so much more and you'll feel so much more revitalized and appreciative for that time why do your eyes always get watery when you're applying mascara it's very much irritating depending on the day i will go in with my charlotte tilbury medium powder um, this is the shade it is a brightening powder and i like it because it does not give me any sort of flashback when i am taking photos and it just brightens up that inner corner just a tad bit i just put it like right in the inner corner and i don't know if you can see the difference between the powdered eye and the non-powdered eye and lastly, I'm just going to apply my beauty marks. I use a black liquid liner for that. Sometimes if I'm doing a more natural look, I'll just use my brow pencil. But girl, as you can see, we're doing a full face. So we're going to do the liner. I tried. Mm-hmm. So this is the final look. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know what were some things that you're gonna try to input in place for your back to school routine to help you be more productive and to be more disciplined and to kill this school year like I know you should because you're what? You're that girl, period. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care and God bless, bye.